Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the channel if, if it is your first time checking us out. Hey, today we're gonna talk about the difficulty of comparing builders uh, whenever you're getting ready to build your custom home and then the issues with comparing price per square foot numbers whenever you start to get those quotes. All right, like I said, today we're gonna to talk a little bit about comparing builders and how you do that when you're trying to make a decision of, man, who do I want to build my custom home for me? And then at the end, we're gonna chat a little bit about the difficulties and the issues, the problem, if you will, whenever you only use price per square foot as a deciding factor or as a major comparison, whenever you're deciding which builder you wanna use. All right, so let's get into this a little bit. So. You know, it's always a difficult thing. How do we really make sure we're looking apples to apples? And that's really the kind of the sticking point with whenever you go to talk to different custom builders, it's human nature. We're all trying to figure out how much is this thing gonna cost? It's a huge financial investment, obviously, to build a custom home, especially in today's real estate market. So how do you really look apples to apples? It's difficult. That's I'm gonna throw that out there right up front is it is extremely difficult to really compare apples to apples unless you have a fully developed plan that you know maybe you purchase from somewhere else whatever the case might be but you have a fully designed ready to go plan that you can go shop to different builders and then everybody's quoting the exact same thing it's the exact same amount of concrete it's the exact same you know framing material the trust package is the exact same so if you don't have that plan fully developed which let's face it not many of us do that's one of the reasons we want to find a builder to work with is to help through that design phase if you don't have that plan totally together, there's some other things that you can do <clears throat> to really try to get as close to apples to apples comparison as possible. Um, let me throw this out there first of all. The number one thing that I, there's a couple things I just wanna mention is that I know it's this way where we build here along the front range of Colorado and across the state of Colorado, having experience in other market areas as well. Honestly, it's the same everywhere. And that is that there's no magic place. There's no supplier or a wholesaler where you can get building materials for vastly less than anybody else. Typically in most metro areas, you know, our, the main city we build in here and the Colorado Springs area, El Paso County, the whole county is maybe about 750,000 people. The city of Colorado Springs is maybe close to 600 now. So that size of a, of a market area. And then also we're only an hour from Denver. So a lot of suppliers are in Denver, but all that to say, there's probably, I would say, three to four major lumber suppliers that are gonna provide all of your framing material, all of your sheeting, all of your truss packages, all of that stuff. And as you can imagine, they're all probably priced pretty darn close to the same. Now, if a builder has more, uh, if they build more volume, maybe they're getting a little bit of a volume discount, you know, like a, a production builder that might, maybe they build 150 homes a year, they're probably, you know, it's possible they're getting a little bit better price because of volume discount. But when it comes to the custom home builder side, typically custom home builders are gonna be about the same volume. You've got kind of your mom and pops that maybe build like one or two houses a year and then upwards of, you know, we're maybe a little bit bigger builder because of some of the relationships we have where, you know, maybe the, the annual goal is to build maybe like 25 custom homes a year. So it varies, but it's not like any custom home builder is building 150 houses a year or they're probably really not a custom home builder. They're probably more of a production builder. So whether it's the framing stuff, um, if it's fixtures, so plumbing fixtures, lighting fixtures, there's probably a handful, again, just a small handful of suppliers, supply warehouses, that their um, electricians and plumbers are getting their material from. So if there's a vast difference in price to build a home and it's real close to apples to apples, or maybe it is an existing plan, so you're really looking at apples to apples, really just, I encourage everybody to take that step back. If three builders are at one price and one builder is at a f substantially lower price, I would just kind of take a minute to think through that and I don't want to say question it, but just do your due diligence on that builder. Because again, if everybody's getting their stuff at, you know, three or four supply houses and they're getting about the same type of pricing from those supply houses and most custom builders typically have about the same profit margin figured in. And of course they'll flex that a little bit depending on the size of the job, but usually they have the same profit margin figured in very close to it. And also you want them to be using quality subcontractors. I know somebody threw a comment up on another video that we did that kind of re reiterated that of, hey, spend a couple extra bucks if you have to, use quality subcontractors because that's where you really get the quality of construction. And that's exactly right. 
if you use subpar subcontractors, you're gonna get subpar or poor quality work. It's just, it's the nature of the beast. If a guy, if a crew could frame a house for, I don't know, throw out a number out there, say it's $50,000 in labor to frame the house, and somebody else is gonna do it for $30,000, if they were as good of a framer as the other crews that all bid it out at $50,000, they'd probably be charging $50,000. Or maybe if they were slow on work, maybe they do it for 45, you know, like a 10% discount. So I just encourage you, if numbers come up drastically different, just keep those things in mind that you want people to use quality, quality subcontractors. And if you're in a metro area about our size or especially smaller, there's only gonna be a handful of those guys available for all the custom home builders. And then also material, it's not gonna be vastly different because most people, most builders are buying their stuff from the same supply warehouses, again, a handful of them, and they're probably all getting roughly the same pricing. So that's, I'll just kind of say that right up front is if there's a vast difference, you might wanna kind of take a step back, do a little bit extra due diligence on those different builders and really try to think through why that price is so much different. Okay, so let's get into what I think is the number one thing you should consider whenever you're comparing builders. It has nothing to do with money. It has to do with personality and just kind of that gut feel that you get. Sometimes you sit down with your with a builder and it doesn't matter the size. It could be a husband and wife team. It could be a company you know with a staff of 20 people. Typically, whenever you sit down with a builder for that initial consultation, you'll kind of get a, a general feel from them. Like, okay, this seems like somebody that's gonna, they're gonna shoot me straight. They're not gonna cover anything up. They're gonna tell me the news even if I don't wanna hear the news, whatever it is, if it's about numbers, if it's about if I can or can't do that and what it's gonna cost. Can they design it the way I wanna design it? Do they, does it feel like they're on the same page as me? This is a big key of why I really like the fact that we have an in-house design team. I know, you know several other builders do because then you can just kind of sit down with the whole team and almost kind of explain your vision to them for your custom home and make sure that it's obvious as you're talking to them that they understand what your vision is, that they can picture it as well and kind of help get you down that path. So something, like I said, the first thing totally unrelated to finances is just that personality, the gut feel that you get with the builder whenever you sit down to talk with them. Do they seem like they want to work with you to work through the process and come to a solution? Or is everything just like, oh, that's not gonna work. No, we can't do that. Sorry, that's not a good idea. So personality, huge, huge factor, like I said in other, in other videos. Man, you're gonna be working with a custom builder for at least a year, probably 18 months. If it's a large scale project, could be as much as two years. So you're gonna be working with these people for a long time. So you wanna make sure as you're comparing different builders, as you're shopping around like you should, to just see which personality fits best with you. And it might be different for, it will be different for different clients. Some people are gonna say, man, I love the feel of builder A, husband and wife team. I love that. I got a real good feel from them, you know, down salt, down to earth, salt of the earth people. And then somebody else might say, man, I kind of like this company because they, they've got some staff members. They have in-house design and engineering and architecture. I like kind of the feel of what they can offer me. So it's going to be different for different people. And that's why I encourage you consider that personality and gut feel you get whenever you first sit down with them at that first initial consultation. That's number one. So then the second thing, as we try to kind of think about, okay, man, we got to compare these. Now let's, you know, we're kind of getting down to financing now, right? So how are we going to compare to see, am I going to get the same level of product for the same price? So one thing that I encourage people to consider or just really ask a lot of questions about, there's two terms I'm going to use. The first one is finishes. Probably makes sense to most people. Like, okay, exterior finishes is my house like how much stone do you have planned and say let's say hypothetically you don't really know exactly what your house looks like but you know you want a 4,000 square foot rancher 2,000 square feet on the main level 2,000 square feet in the basement and that's the bit you want two bedrooms up three bedrooms down whatever it is kind of like some basic structural blocks of what you want this house to be like some general architecture ideas like well I like modern farmhouse or I like modern industrial whatever it is you want, to, you want to give the same level of detail to each different builder. So you want to keep it real consistent. You know, if this is what you told builder A, you want to tell builder B the same thing so that you can kind of see what their ideas are and what their pricing might be like for a, a and knowing that it's not going to be exact. You haven't went through the design phase yet. But with finishes, there's a big difference if you say, if one builder says, oh, we've got, uh, it's all stucco all the way around. And in our area, in our market area, exterior finishes, stucco is typically the least expensive option. Um, so if it's all stucco around the outside versus builder B said, oh, well, it's stucco, but then on the front, the whole front facade is stacked stone or some type of stone product. And that's a vast price difference. That could be a 30,000, 40, maybe, depending on the size of the house, $50,000 swing in pricing. So for exterior finishes, you want to make sure that it's apples to apples. So if, you know, you could even tell a builder, hey, 
I want X on the outside. I just, I, I'm not saying that's what I'm gonna go with at the end of the day, but as I'm trying to get some initial pricing, I need to know what the number would be like if I did this on the outside of the house. And then the same thing on the inside of the house because the level of finishes on the interior of a house can change drastically and it's not always apparent whenever you just look at something. So you might look at a kitchen cabinet and you pull open, you open up the door and you shut it and wow, it's got soft closed hinges. That's like a huge thing and they're about a nickel a piece. I don't know, they're not that expensive for soft closed hinges, but that's something that people always look at. But then one builder might have you know, a kitchen cabinet that, I don't know, they might plan their kitchens at $200 a linear foot for cabinetry. Maybe it's a, a press board side cabinet. Maybe, um, you know, maybe it doesn't have as many, I guess, kind of like fancy things. Like you're not gonna have like a, a place to put all your cooking utensils right next to the stove. It might just be basic cabinetry, press board sides, no plywood in it, that kind of thing. Um, and they might be figuring a stained finish, which is typically a little bit less than painted. Whereas builder B, after talking with you a little bit, or maybe it's just their standard, is they have plywood sided cabinets, um, you know, soft close everything. They figured at $400 a linear foot because they know most people want like a spice rack and they want a utensil pull out and a pull out trash can and all these different things that from their experience and the level they typically build at, they just make the assumption that, okay, that's what everybody wants. But if you don't know those differences, then those numbers are gonna be drastically different between builder A and builder B. And if builder B knew that that's what you wanted or that was the standard, then they could have increased their price a little bit and it would be truly more apples to apples. So everything about interior finishes, you wanna make sure that you're getting the same, you know, kind of the same level of finishes with all the builders that you talk to. And a lot of custom builders, they'll have kind of packages and they'll say, hey, here's our entry level. Like for us, we call it our touchstone package. So really nice package. It's what you would expect to find in a custom home, but it's kind of the, the base standard that we would be okay with. And then there's levels above that all the way up to, I mean, you could, you know, spend an extra $250,000 on a, on a million dollar home if you wanted to really, you know, kind of crank out your finishes and make sure, and just make everything look amazing. So really just making sure that the level of finishes on the inside of the house are the same across the board as you're getting these quotes is critical. And if you don't know all of like what to ask, which I mean, you don't do this every day, why would you know what to ask? Make sure at least that the builder is giving you information in writing that says, hey, here's what our finishes are. It's, you know, this type of cabinetry, um, it's knockdown texture or it's hand troweled texture on the drywall. Here's what our trim typically looks like for around the door trim. Here's what our doors are, they're solid core. You know, it's a Thermatrue front door. Whatever it is, you just wanna make sure that doors, windows, cabinets, all that kind of stuff. You wanna make sure that you're really comparing, like I say, apples to apples with different builders. And that kind of leads into the next thing. So this, that's finishes. You wanna make sure that you're looking at the same level of finishes or as close as possible across the different builders. And then the second thing is allowances. So most, most builders now like a fixed price contract. We've talked about this before in another video. You can check it out, fixed price versus cost plus contract. Um, a fixed price contract, basically the builder says, I'm gonna build it for this much. And you're like, wow, okay, that's awesome. That's $50,000 less than what the, all three other guys said. So you do your due diligence. You're like, well, the builder seems like they're a pretty good builder, but then you look at the allowances. So whenever it's a fixed price contract, you're gonna get a sheet, an allowance sheet for different light items. So it might be like hardwood flooring or solid surface flooring. So it'll be like hardwood, your tile areas, uh, tile for your wet areas, your carpet, um, maybe there's, there's gonna be an allowance for cabinetry. Most of the interior of the home, they're gonna give you an allowance for plumbing fixtures, lighting fixtures, appliances. So all those different allowances, if they're not the same, it could, like I said, it could swing at $40,000, $50,000 because if one builder says, let's use appliances as an example, one builder says, hey, I'll build your house for $1.1 million and you look at that allowance and they only gave you a $5,000 appliance budget you're gonna be pretty disappointed whenever you actually go to shop for your appliances and it's in this one, it's in a million dollar custom home and you're putting in this, <clears throat> excuse me, and you're putting in the stuff from, you know, Best Buy that costs $5,000 for all of your kitchen appliances and, you know, a wet bar fridge or things like that. So that's a big one that people get thrown off on is the allowance for appliances, but that's just one little example. So you wanna make sure that the allowances are the same across the board and if they're not, then you can easily look at those different allowance sheets 
and you can do some math to figure out like, okay, if I made all of Builder A's allowances just like Builder B's, the price would actually be the same now, whatever the case is. And some builders, you know, they want to, they may not want to put together like a super detailed allowance sheet until you get farther down the road with them. I, you've kind of, you've signed a contract and you're going through the process with them. But I think any builder that wants to earn your business is going to be willing, if you're serious about building with them and you know, you're not looking at 20 builders at this point, but you've narrowed it down to like, Hey, three or four builders, two, three, four builders, they all seem super solid. And I think they can give me what they, what I want from my initial consultation. They should be willing to share some allowance information with you and at least say, Hey, yeah, for tile, we figure $5 a square foot for uh, your main level wood flooring. We typically do engineered hardwood. So we figure $8 a foot. Whatever the numbers are, they're going to vary, you know, regionally, of course, but just really, really look at those allowances to make sure that again, we're getting as close to apples to apples as possible. Can't stress that enough. Cause like I said, man, on a fixed price contract, that's the price that you get it for unless you decide to do something different above and beyond the allowances. So you might have uh, one builder that's got a $5,000 lighting fixture allowance. And then you spend $4,000 on your front entry chandelier. You've only got a thousand dollars left for all the other lights in your house. You're going to have to pay that extra money for those extra light purchases that you make above and beyond what the allowance was where again, maybe builder a or B, whatever I just didn't say the other builder has a $10,000 lighting fixture allowance. And now you can get everything. And it's still at that fixed price number that they told you they were going to build at. So allowances and finishes, I cannot hammer that enough because it's really, like I said, it's really hard to get apples to apples unless you have the exact same plan that you're showing all builders. So as you're working through that process, you got to make sure that a, whenever you're saying, here's what my needs are, here's what I want the house to be. Here's the size I want it to be. That's one piece of information. You've got to make sure that you explain the finishes that you want and that you understand what the finishes the builder is talking about as far as what level they are. And then the allowances, you've got to make sure that those allowances are the same across the board, or at least that you have the information so you can kind of do the, you know, back of the napkin math to make sure that you've added in the extra allowances that one builder gave that another one didn't so that you can truly compare that final price, the fixed price. And like I said, at this point, it's going to be a big, it's going to be an estimate. There's no doubt about it. But if you said you wanted a 4,000 square foot house and now you want a 4,500 square foot house, those numbers from those different builders, they're going to get bigger, but they should all kind of grow about the same as long as you're apples to apples compared to what they were to begin with. So those are the big, big things that I just, man, I cannot encourage people enough to just really use that methodology as you look around and talk to different builders and understand that it's a business at the end of the day for a builder. So they're not going to put in, you know, 80 hours worth of work on your project trying to win your business when you're still talking to three or four other builders. They'll certainly put in a level of effort, sit down, consultations, let's kind of sketch some stuff out, see what might be a fit. Let's talk about level of finishes and allowances. Here's what we think we could do. That's what you should expect. Now you shouldn't expect them to, you know, have engineered plans and 3D renderings and all this stuff right at the beginning. It's only fair that you've made a commitment to somebody before they decide, before they can go to that level. But you should have an expectation of kind of those basics that I mentioned. So as you're shopping, try to remember those things. Like I said, personality is the biggest, in my opinion. Obviously, numbers come into play, but personality is a huge thing. And then the giving this all the builders the same information across the board from you, you know, giving them the same the same data points to work from, and then looking at finishes and what the allowances are. That's definitely the I guess whatever that is three or four key things that I would look at. All right, so now let's take a look at the um, price per square foot. And as you can, you can probably kind of figure out where I'm going with this. It goes a lot back to price per square foot can vary a lot. If you're going to, because of finishes, if you're going to, let's say you're going to add 400 square feet to a house, you're going to add 400 square feet to the, 400 square feet to the main level. If you're going to add <clears throat> five feet to the kitchen and that's five extra feet of cabinets, uppers and lowers, countertops, um, flooring, a bigger island, whatever it is that is going to be a lot different price than if you just say, Hey, I want the master bedroom to be five feet bigger. It's just extra room space. You're, I mean, the one wall was the same. You're basically adding a little bit of flooring, a little bit of roofing and a couple side walls, five feet out farther. So that's simplifying it obviously, but the additional space, just open space in a home, isn't going to be nearly as much as extra, uh, like an extra bathroom or a larger kitchen, or I want to add, I want to add 50 square feet so I can put a wet bar over there. That's got basically a kitchenette. Those are going to be drastically different. So whenever you talk to a builder and they say, and you say, what price do you build at? 
every builder, first of all, every builder is going to cringe whenever you ask the question, but they should be able to give you a rough range of, hey, here's where we typically build. $240 to $260 a square foot is usually where we see most clients come in. Yes, we can build at $500 a square foot, but we really can't get much lower than $240 just in today's market. Maybe that just as an example, that's maybe what they say. Well, another builder might say, well, we build at $220 to $240 a square foot. And you say, okay, well, that sounds a little bit better. That's $20 a square foot less. But what exactly does that mean? Does that just mean that their homes typically don't have a lot of those extra finishes? They don't have large kitchens, but they typically have large master bedrooms or large, larger great rooms, but they don't have a butler's pantry or a working pantry. <clears throat> um, that maybe they typically, for whatever reason, their homes kind of usually come out at, hey, it's a four bed and four bathroom. Whereas the other builder at a little bit higher price point, maybe most of their homes, have five bathrooms, but they could certainly do it with four bathrooms. And then maybe your number would be 220 a square foot. So there's just so many variables for price per square foot. It's extremely difficult for a builder to, they can give you a number, but until they know to go back to the steps above, until they know roughly what you're looking for, there's just so many variables. It's really not a fair comparison. And I've seen this happen before that a person will go with a builder because it's a lower price per square foot estimate range that they were given. But then by the time they build their house that they actually wanted at the end of the day, it's more than what the other builder is priced per square foot. And that's normally what they build. So there's just so many variables. I encourage people to, and trust me, I did the exact same thing whenever I was building my house, when I was shopping builders, you know, back in the day, um, when I was kind of newer to the industry, I wanted to know price per square foot because it's such an easy mental measuring stick. You can say, Oh, why well, want a 4,000 square foot house and you're at 200, so that's 800. Okay, so you build my house for $800,000. That sounds good, I like that. But you have no other data to compare that. You have no, I guess you don't have enough information to see if that's a good number, is that a bad number? What does that include? What doesn't it include? Does that include my house figured it being 50 feet from the road, so my driveway's real short? But then the other builder says, well, we plan 100 feet from the road and your driveway and utilities are a lot longer and that's why our build price is a little bit higher. And you're like, oh man, well glad I figured that out because I wanted to be 100 feet from the road, not 50 feet from the road. Like I said, there's just so many darn variables whenever it comes to custom home construction that until you have the conversation we talked about where you know the, the finishes, the allowances, making sure everybody's got the same data to work from, until you sit down and have those level of conversations, you're just not gonna be able to get a fair and accurate estimate for yourself or honestly for the builder too. It's not fair from the builder standpoint. They're like, man, I really want to compete and I really want to give these people a good deal, but you know, it's apples to oranges right now. Like that's, that's just not the same information that they're making their decision from. It, it's, it gets frustrating from both sides, honestly. So um, price per square foot can be tricky. Let me just say that it's tricky. Use it as a, a data point, but not the only data point to make your decision from. Please don't use just price per square foot. Make sure you're as close to possible comparing apples to apples. All right, man, that's a lot. So final thoughts overall, if you are planning on building a custom home, well, the first thing you should probably do, if this is good information, take the time, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get all the notifications, like us, comment, all that good stuff. We really do just want to make sure that no matter where you're out in the country, we just like to talk to people about building custom homes. And of course, if you're here in the state of Colorado, we'd love the opportunity to talk with you and see if we might be a good fit to help you out. So um, that's step number one is get more information. Um, and then overall, just, you know, definitely do your due diligence, shop builders. You definitely should make sure personalities fit, make sure you're giving builders the same information. So everybody's working from the same baseline. Make sure you understand what level of finishes the builder's talking about. Make sure you understand the allowances that are included. If it's a fixed price contract, if it's a cost plus contract, a little bit different, but most builders like a fixed price nowadays, nowadays, I think. So make sure you understand what those allowances are for sure. And don't let the price per square foot be your only data point that you work from. Please, please don't do that. As always, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, reach out, call, text, email, hit us up in the comments, whatever is easiest for you. Like I said, we know there's regional differences, but largely building a custom home is very, very similar no matter what part of the country you're in. And as I mentioned before, if you are here in Colorado, definitely reach out to you. We'd love the opportunity to chat with you a little bit more. Take care.